afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, as people start trickling in here at uh, 5.01 on a, what's today, Tuesday, June 29th, 2021, we have another installment of our H&D Physical Therapy webinar series. And we're so excited to bring it to you today, um, live from Westchester, Queens, New York City, you name it, we're coming at you. We've got a great one for you today. Um, one of our uh, most senior therapists, Javier Benitez, PT personal trainer, has got some really um, exciting uh, demonstrations for you today. So um, let me just give a little bit of background information on what we can expect today. He is going to uh, take us through different progressions of strength training and for beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels, all levels. So if you have some equipment with you, great. Um, if you don't, that's okay. Um, but um, this is all being recorded, so don't feel as if you have to uh, jot down everything or that you're gonna miss it. Uh, we will send you the recording um, as soon as we're done here after a couple of days once we edit it. Um, if you have questions throughout the uh, program, please, uh, post them on the chat. We'll pause throughout the, uh, the uh, throughout the next hour to um, to, to post some questions. Um, and um, yeah, last thing is uh, just to give a little bit of background of, of who's presenting today. Javier, uh, prior to becoming a physical therapist, uh, spent 18 years as a personal trainer and is a certified level one USA weightlifting coach. He's worked primarily in outpatient orthopedic settings treating patients from ages nine to 92 with an emphasis on low back, shoulder, and knee health. Javier uses his combined PT and personal training experience to safely and efficiently progress his patients through treatment while keeping them motivated and accountable for their own physical health. Um, um, all right, without further ado, you wanna take it away, Javi? Okay, yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, so uh, sure. so Midtown's uh, clinical director, Azra, she asked me what I was, uh, when I was gonna present this month uh, for a webinar, what I wanted to present. And uh, without a doubt, I knew how to, I had to involve strength. Um, being in uh, personal training for so many years, um, I emphasized it. And uh, with my treatment, I also emphasize it with my patients as well. Uh, so physical strength is the ability to exert force uh, to move either yourself or an object or other object. Um, so I consider that I rank it up there with posture and mobility, it's very important. Um, if I were to generalize, I'm going to overgeneralize. So if uh, on our data, in our day-to-day -day activities, we're not doing things for dozens of times or lifting something for a half hour, you know, we're taking something from one room to the other. We're getting up from one low couch. We're opening uh, one or two heavy doors. So I like to emphasize strengthening uh, the ability to do something with uh, high resistance a handful of times, but doing it safely and effectively. Um, so um, this, is, um, this is the reason why I like to work on strength building. So I wanna make sure people are comfortable and confident doing these movements uh, while still doing it safely and effectively. Um, so the idea is not to be able to take uh, 20 pieces of silverware and go set the table it's the idea that, oh, I have to take this roast out of the oven. Oh, I want to take this uh, pot of potatoes from the kitchen to the, to the table. Or I want to load this watermelon into my grocery cart. Uh, things like that. So things that are only going to, we're going to do it for a short period, uh, but we need to be able to do it safely and effectively. Um, so for this reason, I have people do things for a handful of times. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm in the clinic or if I'm with a, a training client, I'm not gonna start off by having them do something five times if they've never done it. So, you know, a big part of this is gaining that practice. So uh, when you get the repetitive uh, motions, you get more acclimated to what you want to feel during the motion, um, what type of resistance you, you need, and uh, you can do it more safely that way. Uh, so uh, to keep in mind, I've been lifting way too in resistance training for about 27 years. And, you know, I realize and acknowledge that some of you tonight have not done strength training. Some of my patients or my clients never have, um, but uh, it's important to start. You know, I, I say the, uh, 
I took this quote from somewhere else, but you know, the best day to start strength training, training is yesterday, but the second best is today. So you know, I'm glad you're here today. Uh, I want to review some, uh, some basic movements with different progressions. Um, the idea is that we're going to run through four movements. We're going to uh, break them down. And then after each movement, we're going to discuss them. So if you have questions after, let's say, the, uh, the first movement, we'll, we'll talk about it. After those four movements are discussed, then we're going to run through just a quick circuit. So the idea is that you can possibly try it while you're viewing it the first time. And then if you want to try it during the circuit, you can try it again. So uh, during the circuit, I may just have, let's say, like one minute just running of, uh, of people trying out their progression that they feel comfortable with. And uh, if you have your cameras on, I can say, oh, I see, uh, you know, Joey, like, Joey, try to, you know, lean a little bit more to the right, or I can, you know, look and see how you're doing and see if I can give some sort of, uh, you know, quick critique, something to, to look at. Um, and then at the end, you know, we can have some more questions, okay? So uh, let's see. So the four movements are, it's going to be a push, a pull, a carry, and a hip extension. So a hip extension meaning if you're, uh, let's say you're the alignment of your shoulders through your hips and your knees, if your hips are behind your shoulders and knees, getting into that upright position. So think of it as like getting up from a chair or coming up a step, uh, you know, squatting, things like that. So things we do every day. We get out of chairs every day. Uh, pushing, it's like a, like a push-up movement. So it could be pushing a grocery cart, uh, pushing open a heavy door, things like that. The, uh, the pulling motion is like uh, picking up something from the floor and putting it onto a counter or pulling open a heavy door or uh, even possibly holding on to a, a bus uh, uh, pole, you know, in the, in the bus uh, there. Uh, and then a carry, which would just be carrying something. So whether it means, you know, carrying groceries, carrying a, a suitcase, a laptop, things like that. We do these things on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I'm going to include some simpler movements. If you've never done it, I would say lean towards the simpler uh, earlier progressions. And as you feel more comfortable and you're aware of what you want to accomplish from that movement, then you can, can progress to the other ones. So the first one we're going to cover today is the pushing motion. So I'm going to pull up, uh, I have some, uh, some videos to show. Um, I luckily had uh, Justin, our vestibular uh, uh, specialist. He was, uh, he was kind enough to, uh, to be the model for this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up. All right. This is Justin. Uh, he is frozen in time right here. Okay. So, um, so the, uh, the things I want you to look at when we're doing a, a pushing motion is uh, the angle of your arms to your trunk. So in general, you want to have about 45 degrees between your arms and your trunk. Let's see, it may look a little choppy. Um, Aaron, are you seeing this okay? Yeah, it is a little choppy. Um, oh. Oh. Uh, is it a, maybe a Wi-Fi connection or is it uh, just need to like um, load or buffer? Hmm. Let's see, it should be on my, uh, it's on my computer, it should be good. Okay, I mean, we could see it. Okay, but, uh, okay, if there's questions we can, you know, we can still review. Um, mm -hmm. So I have just been doing a, an earlier progression. So pretty much a push-up motion from the wall. So you want to make sure that the arms, you have a little bit of distance between your elbows and your trunk. You're leading with your chest, not your head. And you want to try to keep your spine in a neutral position, um, just so you're not irritating your lower back and things like that. The, uh, the more upright you are, the... Uh, the less weight you're putting through your, your upper body. So it's a bit easier. So keep that in mind. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if the second, uh, the second one has better luck. Okay. Okay. All right. So the other progressions, Oh, hold on, let's see. All right, oh, I don't know. For some reason it is choppy. It looked, uh, it looked great before. Maybe it's the, uh, maybe it's the Wi-Fi. It's, I'll take one, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, it's not, it's not a slow-mo workout, everybody. This is not one of those super slow sets. This is just normal yeah. speed. 
Justin has a much higher metabolism than uh, than he leads with uh, and shows with this. So he's uh, he's a little bit lower to the ground. So from the bench, he's lifting more weight, uh, more body weight. Um, he has the elbows about 45 degrees from his uh, from his sides. He's keeping his trunk uh, in a neutral position, um, and uh, he's leading with the chest. This was uh, another variation. This is a uh, from the knees. So he's lifting some body weight, possibly less than from the bench, uh, but just giving you some variations to what you can do. And then in a few moments, I'm gonna force him to do some, some regular push-ups here. So same idea, the trunk stays neutral, Justin's leading with his chest and He's, uh, he's keeping his spine, his spine neutral, leaning with the chest, and his elbows are about 45 degrees from the side. Yeah, he's sweating a little bit here. That's why he's smiling. Javier, we had a question here. Um, Push-ups are very hard for some people, um, especially the, the, the regular ones that we're seeing now. How far should, should people try to go down? Is there like a distance, like all the way, halfway? What do you suggest? It's a great question. I mean, in general, you want to try to stay in a pain-free range of motion. So um, when, I, when I have people start with push-ups, I really only go to about a 90-degree elbow bend. So uh, keep that in mind. If, if that's too intense, then go less than that. Uh, but at least, you know, start there. So maybe find the progression that you can tolerate bending your elbow about 90 degrees and going from there. Yeah. Great. If um, and if that's too intense as well, you can also use a band. So if you have like an exercise band, a TheraBand, you can wrap it around your back and do a pressing motion where you press the band forward and you're still getting the muscles that are those pushing muscles uh, strengthened in that way. All right. So Justin, um, so he's doing the rowing motion. He's uh, in an upright position. So I have people start off with this motion for the pulling because if there's any issues with the neck, the upper back, the lower back, you don't put as much strain on those muscles. So, you know, in general, you wanna to try to keep this uh, vertical alignment. So head over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips. You wanna to try to squeeze your shoulder blades to get some of these muscles that are involved with uh, building your, your, uh, your strength and your posture. And try, think about trying to connect your elbows behind your back. So um, as opposed to just trying to bend your elbows and work your arms. You wanna to try to get the, uh, the upper back involved for that. Let me get the next progression as, as you're As you're pulling up the next progression, a lot of um, patients that I see and a very common uh, problem is what you just mentioned. When you do a row like that, people tend to use their arms more than their upper back muscles. What, do you have any uh, tips or, or suggestions that would remind people to use their upper back muscles when they're doing that pull motion, especially with like moderate to heavy resistance? Yeah, and, uh, and keep in mind too, you know, you always wanna start with a lighter resistance, get the mechanics down, and then as you feel comfortable, go towards the heavier resistance. But uh, I like to tell people, think of your hands as hooks and you're really pulling from your elbows. So if you try to use your, your hands and the, the muscles in your wrists and your forearms, you're gonna end up twisting your wrists and bending your elbows hard to use more of your arms. Think of it as uh, almost trying to connect your elbows behind your back, whether it's one arm or two arm at a time. Um, I almost think of it as uh, you're trying to wrap those arms around your spine. So you're trying to get that, uh, the muscle in the upper back to, to contract. Um, yeah. Great, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so here's Justin again. So this is just a, uh, this is another variation. Um, you know, let's say I use a, a door anchor to try to put the, uh, you know, we don't have uh, a lot of people, you know, unless you have a banister, it's hard to wrap a, a band around something at home. So uh, we've got uh, Justin's trusty uh, foot here. Um, you know, we, uh, we, you can see the uh, video, correct? Um, yep. So uh, we just have it wrapped around his foot. You know, I have it around the arch of his foot just to make sure it doesn't slip. And uh, we actually had to knot it a little bit just to get a little bit more resistance throughout. But uh, in general, keep the spine neutral, uh, squeeze the shoulder blades, 
and uh, just pull from the elbows, trying to squeeze the, the arms back as opposed to uh, getting the, uh, or I guess uh, to get the, the back involved as opposed to the arms as much. Okay. Let's find the next one. All right, so uh, let me pull this up. Okay, so this one. So we're using a kettlebell and uh, the support is just uh, the person. So um, Justin's in a, like a long staggered stance, almost like a lunge. Uh, he's leaning on his elbow and he's uh, using the kettlebell for, uh, for the resistance this time. So the idea is that still maintain that neutral spine. Oh, let's see, maybe it's a shorter video. Um, keeping that neutral spine, he's uh, pulling from the elbow, squeezing those shoulder blades together um, and keeping the, the spine straight. Yeah, it's a bit more challenging, obviously, the lower body's more involved. Um, and uh, because the weight's on one side of the body, it's making your, your core work harder uh, to stabilize your spine. I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the questions that came through was like, what, um, what is the benefit of doing one side versus both at the same time? And, and you just answered that. I think that's a really important um, concept to, to realize, not just for this exercise, for, but for many others that you're going to go through, right? Right. And... Uh, I like that that was asked because I, I typically tell someone, try it and see. And it usually your body will tell you. Uh, so for instance, this is an upper body movement, but you would just see it as an upper body movement. But if you tried it out, you'd see how much your legs are involved, how much your hips are working, even your lower back in a good way, um, as long as you have that proper form. So um, keep that in mind. You know, that's an also a way to, uh, another way to look at exercise and movements as well. Um, so you get more benefit out of it. So let's say an exercise where maybe you're, uh, you know, at a machine in the gym and you just feel in your back, but if you did some little tweak to it, you can get more, more muscles involved. So maybe burn more calories or involve more core uh, strength and things like that. So that's another way to, uh, to look at uh, arranging your, your workout routine um, in the future. Mm -hmm. This one, so this is just mimicking, let's say, carrying groceries or just trying to maintain balance while carrying something on one side of your body. Um, it feels differently if you have an object in both sides um, and it's worth trying both of them. You may feel it more on uh, when you have just one weight as opposed to two because there's less uh, weight to help you balance yourself out. Um, so, so try both. So I have Justin doing uh, a march in place with this carry. Um, so whether you don't have as much real estate to, uh, to do a, a walking around or um, this is, you know, one of the first times you've done some sort of balance or carrying motion, um, this is one, one progression you can do. So notice that uh, Justin's keeping his, uh, his chest out. Um, he has his shoulders engaged to some extent. So you want to squeeze your shoulder blades a little bit uh, just to help stabilize the shoulder carrying the... Uh, the, uh, the weight in hand. For those of you that are trying this at home, um, if you have a, a light weight, feel free to um, use it in your right hand for a couple um, uh, repetitions and then switch to your left. Notice um, what the difference is because we're very, we're very asymmetrical beings. Um, so you may be more balanced on one side versus the right or left. So, um, it's, I think that the variety is key. Uh, I agree, yes. And I, I did also, I, I, uh, I just realized that we didn't pause for, if there were any other questions with the pulling motion, uh, let us know. Or Aaron, I, I imagine they're reaching out to you if, uh, if anything else comes mm -hmm. up. Yeah, so feel free to uh, interject, not a problem. So this one, uh, Justin's carrying a, uh, a weight on one side leading with the hips, trying to stay as vertical as possible. He's trying to avoid leaning and uh, keeping those shoulder blades engaged too, just to uh, stabilize his shoulders. Super important to keep your shoulder blades engaged 
and throughout, right? I agree, yes. It, uh, it keeps your back uh, straighter, more vertical, uh, and it also protects your shoulders too. So keep that in mind. You can be doing a strength exercise or carrying the milk or carrying your laptop, and uh, it, it helps to, uh, to stabilize the, uh, the shoulders by squeezing the shoulder blades when you are doing that. At some point, Javier, it would be great if you can touch on um, how people should also brace their abs, you know, during when carrying certain um, heavy items and, and what that feels like um, and, and, and what, how that ties into the core and, and, and what, is, what is the core, you know, that, that we hear so much about. So if not now, then at some point later, because I think that's a, a really hot topic. Yeah, great, great. So, uh, so in general, the core is this cylinder of muscle. Think of like a, like a Pepsi can or whatever can you want. So it's the muscles above and below. So above is the diaphragm, below is your pelvic floor, and then you have these abdominal muscles that wrap around. So there's the transverse abdominis, there's all these lower back muscles, all these postural muscles, your obliques. And if it's stabilized, then it, uh, if it's engaged, it's more, it can stabilize your spine better. So uh, there's this one muscle, we have the transverse abdominis, which it's kind of like our natural girdle. So when we pull our gut in, so when we suck in our gut, we're pretty much pressing that, uh, we're engaging that, that girdle and it's uh, pressing our, our organs up against our spine to stabilize it. So when I tell someone to, uh, to engage their core or keep their abs tight, I want them to pull their belly button in towards their spine and keep it snug. I'd say as if uh, someone's gonna jab you in the, in the gut, kind of like that. So um, it takes practice, especially if you're doing activities. Um, I lean people towards trying to do that with simpler movements, whether it was uh, you know, a basic uh, bicep curl or when they're just literally sitting down or laying down and trying to consistently breathe while maintaining that, uh, that core engagement. And then as that gets easier, then you can do it for other movements, um, which can help as well. Keep that, uh, keep the back from uh, getting as irritated and protect it better. Great. Right. So the next one. All right. All right, so this is the, the, the third progression. So obviously a bit more challenging, um, uh, great posture by, by Justin, uh, but he's challenging his body more because the weight's further away from, uh, from his body. So he's keeping those uh, shoulder blades still squeezed, keeping his abs pulled in tight. He's leaning with the hips, he's not leaning. Um, so just another variation of what uh, you can do with you know, something simple at home whether a small weight or uh, anything else. Okay. The next one, just a, one more variation. So now, um, so even though this is a carry, uh, Justin's definitely working his shoulders much more. The weight is actually in front and slightly to his side. So that's going to work his core even more. Uh, he's got his, uh, his, uh, his grip muscles involved, uh, his shoulders working harder. Uh, so just another variation of uh, what you can do with uh, a simple weight at home. He just has his arm about, bent about 90 degrees. The weight's about uh, you know, forehead level. Do not start with this motion. Try the other ones first. You know, maybe after the weekend you can start getting into something like this. All right. 
And then the uh, the last one, actually, I did have another one. Just uh, I'll give you one more variation. You know, I I know we have a uh, people from different uh, backgrounds uh, checking in, so I wanted to make sure I did some uh, some possibly uh, some possible different ones here. Let's see. We should we should mention uh, when we get to some of these more advanced exercises um, that um, the the saying no pain no gain is is not does not apply here. Um, so just if you if you notice any pain or discomfort with any of these motions, just stop immediately, um, and we can discuss at the end the difference between good pain and not so good pain. Yes, I agree. I agree. Always. Uh stay in that pain-free range of motion. Um, and uh, the more you practice it with a, an easier progression, the, uh, the more likely the, uh, the other ones are, are attainable. Uh, this one I just have just in a, doing a braiding motion. So you know, he's definitely working his core and his shoulders with this, but he's getting uh, more hip mobility, more hip strength, uh, some dexterity, getting some balance in. The, uh, so the last movement we're going to do is a hip extension. Okay. All right, so this is a basic bridge uh, using two legs. So, uh, you know, we do this a lot in, uh, in, uh, in treatment, and uh, I think it's very important because um, it's very simple in the sense that there's not a lot of moving parts, you're not upright, so you can focus on the muscles you're trying to uh, engage. So we're trying to get the glutes to do the work. Um, there's a lot of compensations that can happen with this. For instance, some people may feel in their lower back, some people may feel in the front of their thighs, we're really trying to make the, uh, the butt muscles do the work. So, um, and this is gonna translate, remember, to getting in and out of a chair, when you're going upstairs, things like that. Um, and uh, hip strength, which mostly is glutes. Um, strengthening the glutes is gonna take a lot of pressure off your knees in general, off your back. So it's important to, uh, to get the glutes involved, take some of that pressure off of uh, those other two hot spots. So, um, when uh, when people are doing the bridge, I tell them uh, try to press towards the heels. So that's going to get more of your hamstrings and your glutes to do the work. Keep your spine neutral, so not much of a curve, and uh, squeeze your butt muscles at the top. Um, also, you know if you can, try to keep the abs tight, keep breathing, uh, and that all comes with practice. Can people do this on their bed, Javier? You can, you, um, there's less support than, for instance, if you were on a exercise mat on the floor, but uh, you can try it. You know, if you, uh, if you feel like you can do it safely and comfortably, you can. Um, if there's not enough support and possibly uh, it just feels too wobbly, you can also just do uh, a glute set where you just try to squeeze your butt muscles in that position or just elevate your hips just slightly off the ground, just so you get used to engaging your glute muscles. So this was the first bridge. The uh, the next one. Okay. So this is a one-legged bridge. So uh, same idea. You're going to press through the towards the back of the foot. Try to feel this movement in the in the glutes, the hamstrings. Actually, the, the right now the left glute, the left hamstring. The uh, the right leg is crossed, just so uh, you just keep it out of the way. Uh, and right here, Justin has his hands by his side. So if uh, if you think of uh, 
like a pyramid, the wider the base, the more support it is. So now he has less on the ground. So just having his elbows on the ground makes it a bit more challenging. And then having his arms straight up in the air uh, makes it even more challenging. So just some different variations to make things challenging, whether you're using one leg or two legs. Justin got a full body workout this day. All right, good. And then, let's see, so this last one. So this one, um, this one we're gonna use a, a kettlebell. Um, this one's a, a, a kettlebell swing. So, um, you know, obviously the other ones are, are simpler, easier, progressions and uh, this one's uh, a bit more challenging, a bit more advanced. Uh, and Justin's been working on it. So I'm, I'm proud of him for uh, being able to do this, but he's, uh, and it's somewhat challenging to see with the, uh, the buffer, unfortunately, but he, uh, he's loading his hips and he's squeezing his glutes, driving his hips forward to swing that weight. So again, this is not an arm workout, right? Because to the untrained eye, this might look like they're lifting with their arms, but but he's really not, right? Right. Yeah, he's getting he's getting it pretty much from his hips. So it's you can almost see it as his uh, his hands are just attached to the weight to the resistance, but he's doing uh, the work primarily with his hips. Can you talk? Can you talk about sets and repetitions? Um, Javi, for all these? Yeah, so um, I do like for people to try movements uh, at some point in, let's say, the handful range. So let's say about five or eight times. But at first, especially if someone's new to these exercises or exercises in general, I would lean towards higher repetitions. Um, it's because you can get used to the movement. Um, and with practice comes a uh, uh, you know, understanding and uh, consistency. So um, I'd say at first, if you're doing uh, some of these strength movements, I would do a few rounds of 10 to 15, let's say. Um, and, you know, being aware of keeping your abs tight, making sure you feel the muscles that we're utilizing during that exercise and uh, consistently breathing. So making sure you're not bearing down and holding your breath. Um, and as that gets easier, then you can possibly try doing a less, less repetitions at a time. Um, yeah. yeah, so if you were gonna do a, let's say a, a routine for a day, you know, it depends. I mean, it's, uh, there's different strategies. Um, let's say for a, a strength workout, I'm not as concerned with keeping my heart rate elevated because I'm not trying to improve, let's say my cardiovascular uh, as a priority network, I'm trying to build my strength. So if you needed more rest periods in between uh, the strength movements, that's fine. So some people can do, let's say up to 10 sets in total for a workout, you know, not necessarily one exercise. I wouldn't do one, one exercise for a whole workout, but let's say you pick three of these movements and you do them for 10 to 15 sets in total. Uh, you know, so that would take you, let's say if you were to do it for about a minute, take a one minute break, that could take you between, you know, 30 and 50 minutes, let's say. Um, you can start from there. So those are the uh, those are the different uh, progressions uh, and the different movements. Um, and uh, if if you'd like, if you if anybody wants to try these movements while we have the camera, you have uh, this PT. You have a few PT eyes on you and. Uh, we can, uh, we can help you uh, try uh, some of these movements and uh, feel more comfortable with it. Um, while while um, we have you here, Javi, um, a lot of people had to um, uh, unfortunately um, take, a, take a leave from their gym membership, let's say when the pandemic started. And now as, um, as things start to reopen, uh, they may not be so willing to return to the gym. So 
Um, a lot of people have set up their little workout stations at home. Um, are, are there certain pieces of equipment that you recommend people having around um, to do some of these exercises or some others? Like what are the bare minimum necessities that, that some yeah, so the uh, the ones I keep their strength uh, training program going. The ones I lean people towards are, um, are are these strength bands. So these strength bands are like these large rubber bands. Um, you can find them online. They're uh, relatively inexpensive, um, and depending on the uh, the width of them, it's basically how how much tension you get in them. So this red one's a bit thicker than the yellow one, so it's a bit more. Uh, challenging um, and a door anchor. So a door anchor is pretty much just some sort of loop that you can possibly close into a door and then loop the bands through and do some of those Come pulling on. motions. So um, those are, I say the, the basic ones. Um, and then from there, you can just add more for, uh, for uh, I guess, uh, just diversity. So if you want to try to, you know, be more creative, if you want to uh, just add more uh, variety to your routine. Uh, free weights are great. Um, but uh, I would say in general, start simple and small. And as you feel more comfortable with the movements, then adding to them. But um, I mean, I would say, you know, these bands with, uh, you know, if I were to work out someone who's been consistently exercising for years, I could probably spend $30, $35 and they could get enough resistance to do a full body workout uh, without issues so they're relatively inexpensive the um the other things like the weights uh the kettlebells they tend to be more expensive but if you're if you're interested in them there's a lot of different exercises you can do with them and uh you know the more variety you have the more likely you are to continue the routine which is the most important thing you know there's uh, there's millions of exercises there's millions of pieces of equipment you can use but uh, it's only effective if you use it so um you know just make sure that uh you have an understanding of what to do with them or have a source like a physical therapist, like a personal trainer that can run through a routine with you and make sure you're doing these things properly. Uh, and then you can utilize it on your own and you have the confidence to know you're doing it safely. I always recommend um, whenever possible for people to get a mat, like a yoga mat. If it's easy enough for you to get up and down um, on the floor, a lot of these exercises that we showed you today, for example, the bridges, or any types of stretches, which we didn't really get into today. Um, it really helps if you had a mat um, and, um, and a foam roller. Uh, I'm also a big fan of, um, because your muscles will get sore if you're active. There's a lot of soft tissue injuries that can be avoided um, by foam rolling as well, but that's, that's for another talk. Um, a lot of talk, another question, a lot of talk, Javi, has been uh, what types of exercise routines people should engage in. Um, there's, um, there's endurance training, there's um, HIIT training. Can you talk briefly about the different types of exercise routines and the benefits of each, Let's, starting with HIIT and, and, and explain what that is and, and who should participate in it and who shouldn't? Well, um... I'd say, uh, I mean, there's tons of different exercise routines or uh, styles of it. Um, HIT is high intensity interval training. So that's going from these uh, either high resistance or uh, quick movements and then uh, circuiting through them with other different things. So it could be something from, let's say like a jumping jack to a push up to jump rope things like that. And uh, the idea is that you're doing a lot of different movements that will work your entire body while keeping your heart rate elevated. Um, and they have their benefits. Um, so as, like I said earlier, with uh, if you're working on building your cardiovascular, possibly having smaller break periods in between or doing motions that are uh, more cardiovascular based can be beneficial. Um, but uh, also, like I said earlier, with some of these movements, you may not realize how much your heart rate is, uh, or how cardiovascular the, uh, some of these strength building exercises are because they use so many uh, joints, so many muscles. So you know, doing something where you're just lifting, uh, doing a bicep curl, or where you're working just the, the muscles around your elbow, is very different than doing a row or that row that Justin was doing where he was leaning on 
on his arms. So um, I, I, you know, I tell people uh, your body's great at adapting. It wants to be as conservative as possible when it comes to burning calories, building muscles. So you have to keep changing it up. You know, you want to throw a wrench in the engine. You want to keep your body guessing. So if you tend to like cardiovascular work, do some strength training. If you only lift weights, try to do some, uh, some hits, some cardio classes, things like that, uh, some yoga. And uh, if you keep your body guessing, it'll improve. It'll get stronger and uh, you'll improve your heart rate and uh, you'll be able to handle different activities in your day to day even better. Nice. Um, a lot of, of what you showed us today could be considered uh, what people call prehabilitation, right? Trying to avoid injuries by staying strong. Um, what if people need more guidance? Like if, if today, you know, was a good introduction, but they, they want a little bit more supervision. I mean, um, can they come see you or, or see um, a train, like a trainer or a physical therapist? Like where, where would be a good resource for them to co go to? Both are good. I, uh, I always lean people towards, uh, if you are going the personal training route, uh, go off of someone's referral. You know, the, um, you never know, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, trainers, you just never know their style. And if you at least know someone who's worked with a trainer, then they may have, uh, you may know that they're uh, with more confidence that they're going to be good at showing you proper form and being safe. Um, trainers have very different approaches. So um, I would either do a, I would work with a trainer that is off a referral or physical therapists are great too, because they, they study the, the body. They're constantly aware of body mechanics, body position, making sure you're doing things safely. Um, so you can definitely ask me, you can definitely ask our, our other therapists and uh, they can lead you uh, towards a, a safe way to uh, build your own routine. Um, yeah. And, and do, do you need a prescription to come see you or no? Um, like if, if I wanted to, if I was a client or a patient, like can I just come for physical therapy or do I need a prescription? Uh, so you wouldn't in New York State for the, for the first month. Um, but if you want to extend it past either 10 visits or uh, past that month, then you would need a prescription. Uh, but we also have mm -hmm. uh, a la carte uh, services too where setting up your exercise routine, looking at your body mechanics during certain movements, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. You know, some people come to us for developing agility drills, or let's say they're not comfortable doing certain Olympic movements, uh, like some things that they'll do in some of these exercise classes that they only do it when they're in the class where they don't feel very comfortable doing it, so they may avoid it, or they don't know if they're doing it safely. Um, physical therapy is just a great way to uh, to uh, go over those movements and make sure they're done properly. Perfect. Um, are there any other questions that I may have missed? Uh, if so, you can unmute yourselves or um, just pose it through the chat. We have uh, a little more time here. Um, if I missed your question or if you want further demonstrations or instructions, any are any more information? Just let us know. Okay, um, I'll take that as a no. Javier, if there's anything else you want to add, um, uh, or or are you good? I would just say uh, if uh, if you don't if you're not incorporating a, a strength routine, just uh, Start it, start it today, see how it feels. Um, the idea is that I want you to have the confidence to, to go through your daily activities uh, safely and uh, do things properly. So um, when you have strength, you have better quality of life, you can do more in your day to day. So um, see it as that. And uh, I think it will benefit uh, all of us. And we, and we thank you, Javi. We really appreciate your time. and. And we thank everybody for, for logging on today. Um, we wanna hear from you. So uh, shoot me or Javi or anyone an email, let us know what types of topics you wanna hear about next uh, because we'll, we'll be coming at you again each month from now on um, as a way to continue our outreach efforts um, 
during this challenging time. So I um, hope everybody stays cool in this heat wave, uh, drink lots of water. It's gonna be a hot one out there for the next couple of days. Hydrate, hydrate, and um, stay safe, everybody. And strong. And strong. Mm -hmm.